Welcome back to the Yankees Monthly Recap, a mini-series we do here within the Yankees franchise series, where at the end of every month we go over the past month, we go over the roster moves and the statistics, and we even go around the league for the standings and the league leaders around the American League and the National League. And we just finished up the month of June with a record of 13 and 15 total in June. Not exactly what you want to see out of one month of a regular season, especially since they enter that month first place in the division. And now they are second place in the AL East, two games behind the Baltimore Orioles. And they are sitting 46 and 35 total on the season, but they do have themselves in a playoff spot currently as they are first in the AL wildcard. The Yankees also suffered a pretty devastating injury as their star pitcher, their ace, the best overall player on their team, Masahiro Tanaka, fractured his arm and he will be out for one to two months. A huge blow for this team as he was 9-2 on the season with a 2.29 ERA, 104 strikeouts and 102 innings. He was leading their team all the round. Every time he came out to the mound, you had a solid chance to win that ball game. And he showed that with a 9-2 record and that is a pretty devastating blow but they do they are confident with the rotation they have now with Adam Warren leading it out coming out of the bullpen at 6-0 in the season with an ERA under three so they are definitely confident what they have now but still it's going to be tough to win ball games without Masahiro Tanaka bridging that rotation well, obviously, Michael Pineda is also still at, still on the 60-day DL, torn rotator cuff, still has five to six months left on his injury. As far as the bats go so far on the season, Aaron Judge has arguably been the most impressive player on the team this year. He's hitting 292, which is the most for an everyday player on the team. He has eight home runs, 30 RBI, which is towards the top of the team for both of those categories. And then we also have Jacoby Ellsbury, who has been the best all-around hitter on this team. He has a 292 average, which is tied for Judge. He has four home runs, 30 RBI, 35 stolen bases, which leads all of the major leagues. Well, he's actually tied with 35 with Jared Dyson of the Kansas City Royals. But the other thing about Jacoby Ellsbury is he's leading the Yankees in hits, runs, doubles, triples, and stolen bases. And he has the highest average for an everyday player as Jose Perella has been coming off the bench all season long. So he does not count as a everyday player yet. Some of the big bats in the middle of the order have also been delivering some pop. Todd Frazier, his average is a bit low at a 208. You definitely want to see some improvement there, but they are definitely confident in Todd Frazier in that three hole. The 208 average they're hoping is going to improve. He has 10 home runs, 29 RPI. Brian McCann, similar stats, but a higher average, 256, 10 home run, 32 RBI. Well, Greg Bird, he's hitting 209. He has 10 home runs, but he only has 19 RBI. Like, all his home runs are solo shots. He's not doing a very good job of driving in people, and he's definitely going to try to turn that around here in the upcoming months of the season. Brett Gardner in that two hole, hitting 259, seven home runs, 31 RBI, which is towards the top of the team. It is only trailing Brian McCann for a second on the team. He also has 20 stolen bases in the season, so he's all around getting it done on the field. In the field, at the plate, on the base pats, all around, Jaco all around Brett Gardner is being a solid player. Tom Ullman has really turned things around. Last month, if you recall, he was hitting about 200 if even not even lower than that he's really turned things around got into his own really gotten comfortable facing major league pitching now as he's bumped his average up to a 263 he's got two home runs now his power's coming he's got 16 rbi and he even has eight stolen bases as a dh first baseman type player while the man who's been impressive coming off the bench all season long Jose Perella, he's hitting 304 with two home runs and 23 RBI, and that's basically coming off the bench all season long. So those stats coming off the bench, and Kettle Marte struggling at shortstop, as well as Didier Gregoria struggling at the plate, they decided to give Jose Perella a shot at the starting everyday shortstop position, while Didier Gregorius and Kettle Marte sit on the bench, but Didier Gregorius is poised to be that backup second shortstop role, while Kettle Marte, they are 
highly debating sending him down to triple a so he doesn't mess up his progression as a b potential and he gets as much playing time as possible every day down in triple a and they call up someone like anthony g and santi for his utility role as perella was the utility guy and now he's in the everyday lineup so you don't really have the versatility coming off the bench and they are definitely looking at someone like g and santi to call up Flip things around to the pitching side of things for the Yankees, and the bullpen has really been solid. Andrew Miller led the bullpen with a 1.26 ERA in 31 games pitched, 48 strikeouts, and he even has 14 holes, which leads the Yankees in holds, while David Carpenter is second in holds with four. He also has a low ERA of 1.55, 31 games pitched, 41 strikeouts. Masahiro Tanaka, we already went over his stats. He was 9-2 with a 2.29 ERA, 104 strikeouts, 102 innings pitched. He was their ace, but they're going to have to deal with that for one to two months. Then we move on to Tyler Olsen, who's been impressive. A 6-4 record with a 2.32 ERA, 16 games started, 70 strikeouts, 101 innings pitched. Tanaka's really the only starter the Yankees have who's a big strikeout guy. The rest of them like to get ground outs, fly outs. They just grind their way through ball games. They don't strike out a lot of people, as Olsen only has 70 strikeouts and 101 innings. Adam Warren coming out of the bullpen. He's only had two starts so far this season, but he's 6-0 with a 2.33 ERA, 58 strikeouts, and 54 innings pitched, mainly coming out of the bullpen, like I said. But he did have a great season last year as one of their starters, and he's really proving that he's a quality pitcher in the major leagues in back-to-back -back seasons. While well, Nathan Ovaldi is currently sitting at a 5-5 record with a 2.70 ERA, 68 strikeouts and 103 innings, like I said. Not big strikeout numbers for many of the starters on the Yankees. Luis Severino with a 3-4 record, a 3.63 ERA and 72 strikeouts with 84 innings pitched. Once again, not too big strikeout numbers. It's better than the other guys, but once again, not big strikeout numbers. Severino is definitely young, though, so you never know what could turn around. He's doing solid in his rookie campaign. Del Batances, however, after dominating the first few months of the season, in June he had a rough go of things. He blew three saves, he now has a three ERA in the month of April and May, and even the beginning of June, he didn't allow a run all season long. So he had a zero ERA up until about mid-June, where he blew three saves, it seemed like, in like three out of four appearances he had. And now he's got a 3.09 ERA, 22 saves on the season, 27 strikeouts, and 23 innings pitched. And heading into July, the Yankees lineup, starting rotation, bullpen, and bench look like this. The starting rotation is the number one guy is Adam Warren, best overall starting pitcher on the team now with an 81. Second pitcher is Ad Asher Wojohowski, who is slotted in there to replace Michael Pineda, and they didn't want to disrupt the rotation, so he's slotted in the number two role. Number three role, Nathan Ovaldi, followed by Tyler Olson and My Luis Severino. While on the bullpen, from long reliever all the way down to closer, it goes David Hale at long reliever, four middle relievers in... Jabba Chamberlain, David Carpenter, Danny Burrowa as another right-handed arm in the bullpen that they are thinking about sending him down for either Chase and Shreve or Jacob Lindgren. Justin Wilson as a left-hander, and then in the setup role, he's facing either lefties or righties, is Andrew Miller, and then the closer is who, none other than Dellen Betances. While the lineups for the Yankees is against right-handed pitchers, it's Jacoby Ellsbury leading things off, followed by Brett Gardner, third baseman, Todd Frazier, followed by Brian McCann, Aaron Judge, and then the first base rolls where things get interesting. Against right-handed pitchers, it's Greg Bird, then it's followed by Tom Ullman, Ronnie Torres, and then shortstop Jose Perella. And then we flip things over to the left-handed lineup against left-handed pitchers. We have Ellsbury, Gardner, Frazier, McCann, Judge, and then the first baseman, instead of being the left-handed hitting Bird against left-handed pitchers, it's the right-handed hitting Kyle Parker against left-handed pitchers. And then followed once again by Ullman, Therese, and Perella. While the bench for the Yankees as of right now is Kettle Marte, Brian Pena, Dita Gregorius, and then the fourth is either Parker or Bird, whichever one isn't playing that day. But Kettle Marte, like I said, they don't want to keep him on the bench just rotting away there with his B potential as a 22-year-old. They want to put him down in AAA and get as much playing time as possible out of him so his progression does not, does not stop and they're probably going to send that a triple A any day now and then call up somebody like Anthony G and Santhi is the number one guy I could see them calling up 
a utility guy. As like I said, Perella was their utility guy. That's why he was getting so much playing time coming off the bench, is because he can play everywhere. G and Santi is that guy who can play everywhere. He did solid for the team last year, so I could very well see them calling up G and Santi to be that utility guy coming off the bench. And with that being said, that pretty much wraps things up here for the Yankees June recap. We went over the standings, the lineups, the statistics, all that good stuff. And that'll wrap things up here for the June recap. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I'm saying goodbye.